23 this morning. Acts chapter 10, verse 23, and we'll read through the end of the chapter uh, today. But as we begin, I want us to think about the fact that we are living in a time that is full of tension. Amen? There is tension all around us. There is tension over race. There is tension over income. There's tension over where we're going to live. There's tension over religious beliefs. There's tension over COVID-19. There's tension over every aspect of our life in the world that we live in today. If you don't believe me, just turn on the local news. That's all that's there is negative. There is negativism in every aspect of the world that we look at when it comes to the news. And I wonder sometimes if the world is really that bad off or if the media is just adding to it. But church, the more and more I live in the world that we live in today and I'm a part of society, I'm beginning to believe that we're just that bad off. We've gotten that far away from our relationship with Christ. Does the media add to that? I'm, I'm sure they do. But this morning, what I want us to ponder is a question that adds fuel to this. And the question that I want us to ponder is, do you discriminate? Now, I know what you first think when I say that word is, no, I don't discriminate. But friends, this morning, I want us to understand that when we think about that word, typically the first thing that pops in our brain is discrimination on race. And while, yes, that is a big thing in our culture, and it's one that is dividing us, not only in the worldly world that we live in, but church, it is dividing us inside the walls of our churches as well. But church, there is so much more that we can discriminate against. And so before you get mad at me, let me explain why I say that the answer is, yes, we discriminate. Discrimination is about many things. One of the things that I discriminate about is food. I don't really like Greek food. My, lo my wife loves it. She wants to go eat at Zoe's and Tzatziki's and the Purple Onion and all of these places that serve Greek food. And when I walk in and I eat there, I get this little kebab with three pieces of chicken on it. And I'm like, is that really all I'm supposed to eat? And I feel like that's what I get when I go to a Greek restaurant. But bring on the Chinese buffet and I'm all there. I love Chinese food. Alan, if we got volume back and you're listening, that one was for you. There's a story behind that. Alan Wong, which is June and Terry Lingenfelter's son-in-law, last week when I made the comment about being on the slow boat to China, when I got out of worship, I had a text on my phone. Many of you know uh, Alan is from China, and I had a text on my phone from Alan. He said, what's wrong with the slow boat to China? I said, well, I didn't think that one through when I said it in, in worship this morning. So anyway, that one was for Alan, if he's able to listen this morning. Another thing that we discriminate about against is sports teams. I'm a huge Alabama fan. I don't really like other teams. I'll watch them, but I don't really like them. Another thing that we discriminate about is our drinks. Most of you love to get up in the morning and have a cup of hot coffee. Raise your hand if you like to do that. Some of you drink hot coffee all through the day. I hate coffee. So my beverage of choice in the morning is a cold diet Dr. Pepper. But I discriminate against coffee. And so church, I want us to understand that we are all guilty of discrimination. Some of us, yes, still discriminate in some of the things that are much larger. And I joke about that this morning as we think about where we are in our culture when we think about discrimination. And we think about whether or not we're willing to do whatever it takes to see the world reached for the gospel. 
whether it's we put aside our preferences, whether we put aside our agendas, whether we put aside our prejudices, our preconceived notions, or whether or not we're going to continue on. I want to read you a passage of Scripture. You don't have to turn there because we're going to not be solely in this passage, but I want us to see how Paul dealt with this uh, thought. When it comes to how we are supposed to treat people, the Bible gives clear answers. And Paul gave a great example in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 when he says, Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone. Now let me iterate what that word slave means. That slave, that word slave means that I am owned. Paul said I am owned by everyone. He says to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, although my myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law. Though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law. So as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak to win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means, I might save some. I do all of this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. Church, are we willing to lay aside our ideas? Are we willing to lay aside the things that we were taught, that were ingrained in us for the gospel? Friends, this morning, are we willing to do whatever it takes so that I might save some? Are we willing to accept everyone who walks in the doors of our buildings? I saw an article this week about a mega church in one of the Carolinas that called a new pastor. And on their pastor's first Sunday, he dressed as a homeless man and he walked in the back door. Now this was at the... Uh, awareness of the elder board but he dressed as a homeless man he walked in the back door and people were shuffling him around can you sit in the back can you go here can you do that can you not do this can you leave your book bag here and worship started he was sitting on the back row worship started they got to the point where the church was getting ready. The elders were coming forward to call their new pastor and introduce him to the church. And they called his name, and this homeless man stands up, this man dressed like a homeless man stands up on the back row, and he begins to walk forward. And eyes began to double open. Mouths began to drop open. Some began to be tearful because of the way they had treated this man. All because of the way he looked. Church, are we willing to accept everyone who walks in the doors of our building, even if they don't look like us, even if their skin's a different color, if they wear something different, if they look different, if they act different, for the cause of Christ, are we willing to become who they are? Now hear me, I'm not telling you to compromise your values as a believer. But I'm asking, can we compromise the things that we think are important? Think about the parable of the lost sheep. I listened to a sermon this week that John sent me that J.D. Greer preached. J.D. Greer is the president of the Southern Baptist Convention. He's the pastor at Summit Church in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. And he was preaching a couple of weeks ago on Luke chapter 15 in the parable of the lost sheep. And I've never heard it put the way that J.D. Greer put it. He said that when the shepherd realized he had lost the hundredth, 
He had his 99, but he had lost the 100. He took them to a barn or some kind of a stable to where they would be safe. He took them into the church house to where he knew that they would be sheltered, where they knew that they would be taken care of. And he went out and he looked for the one. Church, why is that so important? It's so important because there is nothing that you and I can do that brings as much joy to Jesus as seeing one lost sinner come to know him. There is not enough songs that we can sing in this room. There is not enough passages that I can preach from God's word to make us feel good because we came and we heard the gospel today and we, we listened to God's word. There is not enough of Bible study that we can go to that brings God as much joy as one lost sinner coming to him. And so church, I ask you, even if it means that we have to not discriminate, even if it means that we have to put aside our barriers and our preconceived notions, is the one important enough? Is the Lord finding joy in the one important enough that we would lay down those things? Are we willing to do whatever it takes for the gospel? See, this, ba this parable was basically showing the importance of that one lost sheep. And that one lost sinner. And so this morning I ask you in that question, do you discriminate? Church, we all have our stuff. We all have our things. The question is, are we willing to set them aside for the sake of the gospel? And I want us to see what happened with Peter and Cornelius in, as we continue the story this morning and how they walked through that and how Peter got over that in his time with Cornelius. So let's begin reading Acts chapter 10, and I'll begin reading in verse 23. Acts chapter 10, verse 23. And it says, The next day he rose and went away with them. And some of the brothers from Joppa accompanied him. And on, and on the following day they entered Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. And when Peter entered, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter lifted him up, saying, Stand up, I too am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many persons gathered. And he said to them, You yourselves know how unlawful it is for a Jew to associate with or to visit any one of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without objection. I asked then, why you sent for me? And Cornelius said, four days ago, about this hour, I was praying in my house at the ninth hour. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your alms have been remembered before God. Send them therefore to Joppa and ask for Simon, who is called Peter. He is lodging in the house of Simon, a tanner by the sea. So I sent for you at once. And you have been kind enough to come. Now, therefore, we are all here in the presence of God to hear all that you have been commanded by the Lord. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that, is, that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea. Beginning from Galilee, after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear. Not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be the judge, of the, to judge the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Verse 44. 
While Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among them, the circumcised, who had come with Peter, were amazed. Because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. Would you pray with me this morning? God, thank you so much for your word. God, thank you for Peter being willing to do what you call him to do. God, thank you for using Cornelius, a man who was considered by the Jews unclean and uncommon. But God was still one who wanted to worship you and to follow you. He was an upright man. And so, God, we thank you for that. God, we thank you for the realization that, Lord, we all have our stuff that we need to overcome. And so, God, this morning, I pray that you would help us to move past those things. God, help us to figure out how to not discriminate for the cause of the gospel. Lord, lead us in your word this morning. It's in your gracious and loving heavenly name we pray today. Amen. So in the balance of the time that we have left, I want us to see four things this morning that will help us not discriminate against others. In the first few verses here, verse 23 through 29, we see the story of what happened with Peter. And I think the first thing that we see in Peter's life and the thing that we must do to not discriminate against others is we must be humble. We must be humble. Notice, Peter went with the three men that came to get him, and some of the Christians from Joppa went with him also. He took people with him. As Peter entered Cornelius' house, Cornelius knelt before Peter. Peter's reaction was not what he thought it would be. Instead of Peter expecting him to continue kneeling, Peter told him, he said, get up because I'm a man just like you. I'm no better than you are. He was humble. He set aside the things that he thought were right, the things that he may have been taught. And as Peter entered Cornelius' house, Cornelius knelt. Peter's reaction was to quickly tell him to get up and to not bow to him or to any other man. And that shows Peter's humbleness. Peter was a Jew and Cornelius was a Gentile. And in that time, they didn't associate together. They definitely weren't in the same house together. They weren't fixing to get a meal together. They weren't living together. Many Jewish people considered themselves better. They considered themselves more righteous than the Gentiles. Peter could have allowed him to bow and to continue to bow, and everyone there would have thought that it was right because of his race. He would have thought that he was doing the right thing. And the people would have known why Cornelius was bowing. It was just part of what they did. But Peter went further into the house and found a large group of people, more than just Cornelius, And he asked them if they were aware that it was against Jewish law for a Jew to speak to or associate with the Gentiles. But before they answered him, they told told him that God had showed him that they were not unclean just because they were Gentiles. Peter told them what had happened. Peter explained to them why he was able to associate with them. It wasn't because of something that he had done. It wasn't because he was able to get rid of all of those things, but instead God had helped him. So church, we can't be humble on our own. We have to have the help of Jesus Christ. We have to allow the Lord to use us, to teach us, to mold us. Peter humbled himself and went and spent time with the people that most of his life he was told that he couldn't spend time with. He was humbled by the lesson that God had taught him, and he was living it out. So church, in order for us to not discriminate, we must be willing to not, we must be willing to be humble. But number two, in in order to not discriminate, we must not show favoritism. We must not show favoritism. In verses 30 through 35, we see uh, what happened here in this story. And after hearing why Cornelius had him brought to Cornelius' house, Peter's response was that God shows no favoritism. 
Peter didn't think that God was the one who told Cornelius to send for him because, after all, the Jews didn't think that God would speak to a Gentile and tell them what to do. He thought that that was just for the Jews. But Peter quickly realized that God doesn't show favoritism. God doesn't discriminate. Peter's response was that God didn't show that favoritism. And he also responded that God is looking at people's hearts and not what they look like. Not what they act like. Not what nation they're from. Remember that we are to see people through the eyes of God. And God doesn't show favoritism. In that same sermon that I referenced a few moments ago by J.D. Greer that I listened to this week, J.D. was talking about a a story of of one of the early days in his time at the Summit Church. He's been at Summit since, uh, I think he said like 2002, so he's been there for quite some time. And in some of his early days there, J.D. began changing some things. This was a a traditional Baptist church who uh, was kind of what we see kind of in a First Baptist type Uh, environment, handbells, all of the traditional things. And they began changing some things. And JD got involved with some guys that were playing basketball and built a relationship. And quickly he uh, began to have the opportunity to share the gospel with these guys. And they all had nicknames for each other. And JD said that the nickname, he was the only white guy on the basketball court. And the nickname that they had for him was Mr. Please Don't Shoot. Because when he shot, he was going to miss. The other guys got it, but he was going to miss. And so one of the guys, he was able to, to eventually lead him and his, his fiance into marriage and marry them. And then he was able to lead one of the guys to the Lord. And that guy came to be baptized at the Summit Church. And J.D. says it was the first African American that he had ever baptized at the Summit Church. And the guy stood in the baptistry with J.D. Greer about to get baptized, and he shared an awesome testimony. And after the service, one of the elders came to J.D. Greer, and he said, J.D., well, he actually, he said he called him son, because in that day he was young, and they called him son, kind of like some of you guys do to me. Son, you know, there's a lot of people around here that aren't happy about some of the changes that you're making. He says, yes, sir, I understand. He said, and I'll be honest with you, I got some questions about some of the things that are changing too. He said, but son, if that right there happens, and he pointed to the baptistry, and he talking about the testimony that was shared. He said, as long as that right there is happening, he said, I'll never question you again. Because I know that God's in the miracle working business. I know that God is going to change the hearts of these people. Church, God doesn't show favoritism based on our socioeconomic status. God doesn't show favoritism based on where we're from, what color our skin is. God loves us all the same. So in order to not discriminate, we must be humble. And we must realize that God loves us all. And that God's word is for all of us. And we cannot show favoritism. Number three. In order to not discriminate, we must understand that the gospel of Jesus Christ is for all people. Perfect Jesus became sin on the cross for all people. Church, everyone deserves to hear and respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not one group that looks like us, that we associate with, but everyone. That means to the ends of the earth. Church, that's why we believe at Mount Pisgah Baptist Church that God has called us to strengthen relationships with God, His church, and the world. Because we believe that God has called us to the nations, to everyone, because everyone has a responsibility and everyone has the right to call on Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So we must be humble. We must not show favoritism. We must understand that the gospel is for all people. And fourthly, we must understand that the Holy Spirit indwells all Christians. Notice 44 through 48. I want to read it one more time so that we get the full picture. Verse 44, while Peter was still saying these things, he was still talking, he was still telling them what was happening. The Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed. 
because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. All people, even the Gentiles, the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out on. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. Church, these Christians were filled with the Holy Spirit. And this was shocking to the Jewish Christians that even the Gentiles were given that gift of the Holy Spirit. Church, the Holy Spirit is not just for some select few like we teach sometimes. The Holy Spirit is for all of God's children. It is our guiding path. It is what leads us along our journey. It is who gives us direction. It is for all who call upon the name of the Lord. Peter immediately called for them to be baptized. For most of us, that doesn't seem like a big deal. But for these Gentiles in this passage of Scripture, they were being part of something that had been strictly prohibited in the Gentile culture. Something that was strictly set aside for Jews for quite some time. And so church, we must understand that the Holy Spirit indwells all Christians. All who call upon the name of the Lord. We are not something special. The Holy Spirit indwells all. I love the last part of what happens in verse 48. It says, then they asked him to remain for some days. Church, have you ever gone somewhere and you met some people and you were just going to go in and go out real quick and you got there and you began living life together and you didn't want to leave? You enjoyed it? Some of you may have been in that experience when you visited Mount Pisgah Baptist Church for the first time. We're just going to pop in and pop out. We're just going to substitute teach here for a little while. I'm not going to continue to teach. I'm just going to do this or I'm going to do that. But they asked Peter to stay. And Peter stayed. Even though he felt like he probably shouldn't, he stayed. He stayed for several several days. Church, that just shows the change that happened in Peter's heart. And the same change that happened in Peter's heart can happen in my heart and can happen in your heart if you'll allow him to. This morning, as we close, I just want us to spend a few moments in prayer. Miss Sharon's going to come, and she's going to play piano. There's going to be quiet music in the back. And I just want us to bow in reverence and reflect on what God's called us to do. Is God calling us to that humble life? If you have a question, let me answer it for you. Absolutely, He is. Is God calling you to not show favoritism? Absolutely, He is. Is God calling you to understand that the gospel is for all people? Absolutely, He is. Is God calling you to understand that the Holy Spirit indwells all Christians? Yes, He is. And if we can't accept those things today, we need to do business with God. And so this altar will be open. I'll be here if you need to talk. I'll put my mask on. You can come down and talk to me. But I pray that you walk out of these doors changed today. Because church, we all have our stuff. But we got to lay that stuff aside so that the gospel can be reached, can be given to all. Would you pray with me this morning? God, thank you for today. God, thank you for the opportunity to share your word. God, I pray that if there's one here in this room today, God, who would say, you know what, I've held on to some things. I've held on to some things that I've been taught. I've held on to some ideas that I've had all my life that's kept me from sharing the gospel with some. I pray that today would be the day that you set those things down and follow the Lord to wherever He leads you, to whatever person He leads you, whether they look like you or not pray that today as the song that Sharon sing played, I pray that we would surrender all to Jesus. Again, this
this altar is open. I'll be here if you need to talk. Please don't leave this place today without doing business with Jesus. If he's tugging on your heart. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity to study your word. God, give us a burden for the one lost sheep, God. Give us a burden for those who may not act like us, who may not look like us. God, because you came for all. Help us to realize that. Lord, we love you and we praise you. In your gracious, Father, in heavenly name we pray today. Amen. You can pray where you're seated. You can come here to the altar and pray. Whatever you feel most comfortable with. Just evaluate today. Are there things that you need to get rid of so that you can take the gospel to the world the way Jesus has commanded us to do? Thank you for being here today, and thank you for joining us. I hope we were able to get things worked out online. It sounds like maybe we did. Um, again, thank you for being here today. Uh, I do want to remind you that there's uh, a shower today for Miss Pam from 2 to 4, uh, and then next Sunday there's a shower for Grace from 1 to 3, and then the following Saturday at the General Lee Marina, there's going to be one for Ashley Morton. Uh, good game. Those of you... Uh, Morton is her maiden, or it's her married name. Good game is her uh, maiden name, and that is Karen Sewell's daughter. And so we'll want to remember that. Again, thank you for being here this morning. Uh, Walter, would you mind closing us in prayer this morning?
to you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the message today. It certainly is lightening to us to understand that you love everybody and that we need to be humble and to reach out and uh, for the one that's lost, that we can seek them out and follow the way that you'd want us to be. Be with us this week. May we be a light, uh, shine, and uh, people know that we're Christians, that we love for you, and that they would want to know what we have because you have loved us and given us your spirit. Be with us today. Be with us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You guys have a great day. We look forward to seeing you Wednesday.